Hi, Perry here for Wisdom Wednesday. And uh, I'm trialing some new software. So if anything goes wrong, you know why. The system is failing me. Anyway, let's get into something that is vitally important to understand and to master if you are a business owner. What you've probably seen over the last, I don't know, two to three weeks is a lot of case studies that I have been putting out there and pushing out through Facebook and what have you about business owners that I've helped build their, them, them out of their business, meaning that they're only working 10 to 15 hours a week. Some of them are, are not working at all. Their business just give them passive income. And this is something that I specialize in. It's something that I've been trained in and I've done for myself and have done for many of the top franchise people in this country, actually, because I, I really honed this skill working for Snap Printing, Worldwide Printing, Action International, where I work, work with their top franchise owners. Now, a lot of people can give you how to do that. Like basically, it's about how you set up your systems. It's about automation. But what most people don't know, and this is business gurus that teach this stuff, is they don't know enough about human behavior and human psychology. And because they don't know enough about human behavior and human psychology, they can't teach their clients probably the most important thing that you can teach them when it comes to building a team. See, to build a business that runs independently of you, you have to have a team that are highly competent, highly skilled, and are completely trustworthy. Completely. See, you can put all the good systems in, you can follow all that other advice about how to build a business so that it runs independently of you. By the way, which means that you'll have to change your thinking and also change your unconscious patterns. But if you don't get this next element right, nothing will work for you because you won't have the people that you can trust to run the systems that run your business. Now, let's just take most business owners anyway in general. If you ask them what their biggest problems are, they're going to say, uh, typically, I don't have enough lead flow. That's easy to solve. And the next one would be uh, staffing nightmares, just dramas, constantly having to watch them, underperform, overcoach them, got to be on their back all their time, all the time. And you know, you generally talk to most business owners and they might have 10% of their staff are really, really good. And 90% of their staff are sort of, or 70% of their staff are average and then 20 or 30 just nightmares for them. And that's terrible, right? <laughs> How'd they, get the, how'd they get that 10 to 20% that are working okay? That was just luck. In our Ignite Business Mastery program, we have a recruitment system that's worth about $50,000. And that recruitment system is based on behavioral sciences. And any of my clients that use it will only attract team members that have the same values as the business owner. So we'll step back a step and go, what happens if you don't have staff that have the same values as a business owner? Well, a whole bunch of things. Many years ago, I was asked to, I was probably about 33 or 32 at the time, I can't remember, but it was some friends of mine who owned a restaurant wandered a night off because restaurants, when they're not set up properly, they hadn't followed my advice, are just traps and you've got to work in them all the time. So they said, Perry, can you come and just, just start, wait some tables for us? I said, yep, yeah, fine. No problem. I'm not doing anything at night. They knew I had a background. One of the things I used to do years ago was I'd work with very wealthy people and I they, they bankrolled restaurants and cafes and I would set them up, build the teams and get them running. So they knew that. So I came in and here I am waiting the tables and suddenly when the business owners left, 
all the staff stop working. They're like, well, we're going to muck around and have some fun. And I was kind of flabbergasted because it didn't matter to me whether the business owners were there or not. I just wanted to do a good job. They were leaving dirty dishes and on the tables, not topping up people's water glasses. They're all chatting over in the corner and having fun. I just kept working because I didn't want the clients to suffer. I wanted to do a good job for them. And at that point, that shows you my value structures. My value structures tend to be, I have high standards. I constantly want to do better. I like to grow, evolve and learn. I have a perfectionist trait. I can be over responsible. And the, probably the number one word for my value structures is conscientiousness. You know, what does that mean? It means that you want to do a really good job. Now, many business owners are like that. I suppose that's why we are business owners. We understand that our success comes as a, as a result of how we act and behave. And we know that we have to do a really good job or we're letting people down. Our customers will be upset with us. But it goes deeper than that because we would be upset with ourselves, wouldn't we, if we don't do a good job? We would feel like a failure. Well, that's who most business owners are employing. People that don't have those values. There's only 10, maybe 10, 15 percent of the population have those value structures. And because business owners don't know anything about human behavior and human psychology, that's not built into their recruitment systems. And they've got all these people coming through that are what we call comfort seekers. Comfort seekers, the moment you leave, they don't have high standards. They don't have a huge desire to be a super achievers or to perform highly. So the moment you go, <laughs> they start budding off. So a, a, a normal business owner is in there trying to micromanage, trying to get these people to perform better, but you can't change someone's values. If, if you're an adult and you have teenage kids, you know what I mean. My wife, she's there, mag, 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 mag. She says to me, I don't know why they're not listening, because it just makes sense what I'm saying. Everything she says makes sense. She's an adult. She's mature. She's responsible. Right? <laughs> if you keep drinking, if you keep drinking, it's no good for you. Right? <laughs> right. Teenagers are like, uh, I don't want to hear that, because they've got a completely different set of values. They can't even hear you. So most business owners are trying to change other people's value structures, which is just a waste of time. So case in point, I, I've never had, I can't think of I, I, one person, yeah, my staff will remind me of this. Someone referred someone to me years ago, said, oh, look, they're really, really good. So I didn't use my normal ways of recruiting. And I just suffered a nightmare with this person. But outside of that, anyone that's ever worked for me has been amazing. They've got the same values as me. So at the Fire Yourself workshop this weekend, I got one of our clients up, his name's Craig Warren. Craig Warren came up and I said, so when you're working, what are your values? And he goes, I want to perform really highly. I've got really high standards. I said, great. And I said, uh, how do you feel when you make a mistake? He goes, I feel pretty bad. I feel shame and guilt, actually. And I said, well, how do you feel when you, when you don't deliver to your highest standard? He says, I get a bit down on myself. So he's self-correcting. It's his intrinsic desire to do well. So what does that mean for me when I employ, and I only employ people like that? Is that I don't have to give them a hard time if they make a mistake. I don't have to constantly inspire them or motivate them to perform highly. I still have to be a leader and set a vision, but I don't. I, you just have completely different interactions when you've got people who have the same values as you. They work just as hard as you. They care just as much about what they're doing as you do. So all of a sudden, you're free. You don't have to micromanage. Really important. So these are high performers and our recruitment system and our Ignite Business Mastery program, that's what they use. And it just guarantees that only high performers apply for roles. Another quick important tip is you've got to use, so once you get, a, you're looking for two things. If you're employing someone to a role, you are looking to make sure 
their behavioural profile fits the role. And, you know, and let's just use an example. So a, a doctor's office. A doctor's office requires a couple of things for the receptionist. From a role perspective, it requires the receptionist to be really good with people, really warm, welcoming and caring, especially because people are sick, they're in pain, they're uncomfortable, they're scared. So you want to help them feel really warm, cared for. But at the same time, the opposite polarity of the, that behavioural profile being a really people person is required, which is high attention to detail, high levels of responsibility around detail and planning. Why? Well, insurance companies don't pay. Here in Australia, Medicare won't pay unless all the details are kept really accurate. If all the paperwork's done and put in in time. They can get sued by the government if compliance isn't done perfectly. They've got to run really complex calendar systems with multi-doctors often. So we know from our profiling system, and if you haven't done it, just go to my website, perrymartin.com. Most of you will have done it. And underneath the video, you see an entrepreneurial um, personality profiling system. Go do that. Put your team through it. You, you'll get a real understanding about your strengths, gifts, and weaknesses from a behavioral perspective. But if we come back to the doctor's office, you can see that role requires 50% evaluator, 50% motivator. And so when people apply, I get them through the psychometric profile, and if, if someone applies and they've got 80% motivator and 20% evaluator, I know they're not suitable for the job. Because they'll do really well with the people stuff, but they'll be making mistakes with the detail stuff. And after a few mistakes, what they'll have to do is use will to force themselves to be really good at that. And if you have to use will to force yourself because it sits outside of your natural gifts based on your profile, you'll start to feel flat, depressed. You won't enjoy it. See, people don't know this stuff when they're putting people in roles. If you put a really good person in the wrong role based on their behavioural profile, they'll become a low performer. Okay? So, again, if someone applies for that role in the doctor's office and they come in 50% motivator, 50% evaluator, and they've gone through the other processes in our recruitment system, and I can see that they have high performance value structures, I know I've got a perfect fit for the role. Now, you won't get away with running a good business. You know, it's, it's great people that make a great business. And specifically, you want to build yourself out of your business without understanding and mastering this information around people. Anyway, that's it for Wisdom Wednesday. And it looks like my software, my new software is working well. If you've got any questions, check them down below. If you are interested in talking to me about your team or something that you're struggling with with your team, uh, just message us, message us, message us, message us, <laughs> and uh, we'll have a chat. Thanks everyone. See you.